Hey, how's it going? How you been? What's scrapnin'? The weekly class, motherfuckers. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the weekly scraps episode sixty four. We got UFC two forty seven coming up. Yeah. Big weekend, big weekend of fights. We got John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. We also have Valentina Shevchenko making a return against the one and only Caitlin Chukagian, the blonde fighter. Yeah. So we got a lot to discuss. I got my friend here, teammate, training partner, also new GM at the gym at Law MMA Residence. Steven Jamal Lee. Steven Lee, <laughs> that's it. That's perfect. You might better know him as Jamal. Um, from the guy from uh, the Instagram. Yes, guy from the Instagram. The That's guy me. from the Instagram. That's him. That is him. Dude, we had a crazy weekend out awesome in PA. Weekend. Three and zero. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. I love it. I yeah. love it. Who uh, who do we have on there? My brother Kelvin Sterling had a great win over a guy. I didn't even know he was four and zero at the 4-0. time. Four and zero. I think he, he beat uh, one of our other guys from the gym too earlier. Yeah, Chris yeah. Pereira making his debut. Mm-hmm. Is it? Even, I think it might be a little bit worse that. I didn't even know my brother's record was four and three. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even realize he had that many fights. This guy's fighting like every other weekend. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved it. But I was like, don't pay. I was like, don't pay attention to the record. He's never fought. No one like you. You're way tougher than this kid. Go smash this guy. I mean, I told him early on, like before, I'm like, this kid's like, this is a kid. This is exactly this is a kid. You're not losing to no kid, and he's like, I'm not losing to no kid. And that's it. You got the job done. Exactly. That's pretty much sometimes the mindset you just need to have yeah. when it's just like. Well, my testosterone has been around a lot longer than yours, and I should win just because of that. Yeah, 100%. He wasn't going to lose that one. He looked good, chopped the legs down, Mm -hmm. a lot of low kicks, um, defended some takedowns, got taken down, got back up. Yeah, defended well. So it was good. Good learning fight, growing fight. Definitely. Beat a guy like that undefeated. Mm -hmm. Um, We also had Nassim. Yeah. Sidikov. Yeah. Big win. Big win, man. I mean, he made that probably closer than he needed to. But man, <laughs> a lot closer. A lot closer. Than I thought he was going to, I mean, he definitely probably had the ability to uh, put the guy away, but that was, Round that was one. tough. Round one. I thought the fight was over. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Touched him up, just like pad work, and I thought the fight was over. When he had the back, too. Oh, my God. I thought he, I thought the guy was going to, you could see actually his hand come up for like half a second thinking about like, ah, yeah. I might call it, but I guess just <laughs> get just enough space to, you know, fight out of it. That kid Harris is really tough, dude. And it was interesting because this is the second time at least Nas has told this to us. He said um, the kid was on his back because the last fight, the kid was on his back early, mm-hmm. but he got out. Mm-hmm. He said, but he's telling, talking to his opponent. He's like, they're throwing like, you know, the little short punches. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, bro, when I get out, you're, you're fucked. You're <laughs> fucked when I get out of here. <laughs> so it's like, I find That's that funny. so hilarious because I'm like, as an opponent, you're in a dominant position. You're probably like. Well, I feel like I'm winning right yeah. now, but um, shit, if you get out, <laughs> well, now what's going to happen? I mean, I'm not going to let you out just because you said that now. Like, yeah. When I get out, you're <laughs> fucked. Like, all right, well, then you're not getting out. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. See, I thought about letting you out, but <laughs> nah. No, the way you sounded, I don't know. It might uh, not be good. I thought out of all the fights, like that was the biggest uh, growing fight. Um, for sure. Nah, yeah, I think that's a big learning experience for him. I think that's one of those fights that in the long run is going to help him out a lot. Yeah. He did a lot of great things. I think he, he fought a little emotional. Yeah, I think so, too. A couple but of times throwing, like, some haymaker that bombs. That he really didn't need to. <laughs> maybe, look, maybe you get hit once, and then you're like, all right, now I got to hit him back. So maybe it was one of those situations. But I think Ray was in the back. Yeah, Ray was in the back, and he said you, you like, winded up the punch from your ass. He did. <laughs> That's what. It was dying. Yeah. But uh, all good stuff, man. And then we had, of course, our last fight, main event, <sighs> short notice fight. Also, Kelvin took the fight on short notice. Yeah, yeah. About two weeks. And uh, James got the fight on even shorter notice. Even shorter notice, yeah. Six days. I mean... Six days. These were all guys basically brought in to lose. Yes. And every one of them showed out. I mean, look, I'm telling you right now that those CFFC guys are not happy with what James did. That guy, he, I mean, he took his arm home with them. I'll tell you one. what, though. They put some respect on that name now. Oh, yeah, no. Everyone's going to remember James now. I mean, you see, he's on uh, he's on ESPN MMA. Like, there's... Yes. I mean, that video Big is stuff. Viral. Holy sh... Oh, that arm break is freaking this that was nasty when i see something like that you see that you're being brought in to lose now the next time you show up for the promotion you're like are you gonna write the check or do i need to break your goddamn arms too and then once you do that they're like yeah i remember what happened to the last guy he's their guy now that's that's their (laughs) champ whether they like it or not that's their champ and what i do love though at the end the president did come over and said to james and i got to hear this myself Whatever you want to do, 35 or 45, you let us know. You, you pretty much told them, you're calling the shots. Awesome. I was like, see, James, all you got to do is whoop a little ass. Whoop and, a little. 
everything just it's like you just write the ship it's like when your kid acts up you know you gotta mm-hmm. spank him and discipline him but when he, next uh, you know they're back in line no, they he, understand he's, he gets rewarded for doing something <laughs> good there. yeah look <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, that was a huge win for him. And uh, Sabatini's, you know. Tough dude. Tough submitted dude. so many guys. Yeah, black belt. A legit black belt himself. So, yeah. Um, I think he's actually got some, like, jujitsu wins over some Sarah guys, too. So, I'm sure that feels good yeah. for James to uh, get that it's one back. It's a big feather in the cap. Oh, yeah. No, that was awesome. Good got, for James. Like, got some hardware to take home. 100%. So that's, that's, Hopefully, you know, you know, he gets a shot now at the contender or, like, you know, just a short notice fight in the UFC, too. I think that's completely possible. Very possible. Yeah. I mean, we got some cards coming up. He could definitely jump on. Mm-hmm. I, I am hoping that he could get on the contender series. Maybe mm-hmm. with one more fight at Bandwick, get mm-hmm. him down to get really acclimated to acclimated that to getting down there. And he's just a bigger guy out that yeah, way. He's yeah, a definitely. little bit, I don't know, I'm more ripped, but mm-hmm. he's definitely a little taller than mm-hmm. me. And um, he, might, he might carry a little bit heavier weight than I do. I think so, the walking around weight yeah. overall, yeah. Yeah, so that's a big band weight. Yeah, super happy for him. We got, we're like Team Alpha Male, the lightweights. We're like the East Coast it's version. It's starting to become that way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're nah. the East Coast version. I mean, but that's what happened. And everyone's so competitive, too. So it just everyone's level kind of gets brought up. Like, you see Marab and uh, James sparring every other weekend. Yeah, and uh, Naoki's in the mix. Naoki's in there, too. I mean, who else we, we got? We got Pomi, obviously. Pomi. Can't forget Kid Turbo. Can't forget about Kid Turbo. We didn't forget you, Kid Turbo. You're welcome. Um... Other than that, man, congrats to you guys, man. That was uh, a huge fight for everybody. Mm-hmm. Great morale. I think that was like the first fight card of the year for us, right? I think to start think, off the year. Yeah, with uh, everyone on there. Yeah. I mean, big, yeah. Big weekend for everyone. 3 and then This weekend, we got um, Damian Nelson fighting at Trayon. Yeah. Next week, we have Dennis Bazookia making his return. Um, Diana, I can't say her last name. Yeah. Diana K. There we go. Um, Lauren's not on the card anymore, right? No. And neither is Ed. Not neither is Ed or Quiet Man, but I think um, we got a couple there's people four, still on there. There's four people, I think. I think we got... Uh, oh, Justin, Kid Montalvo. Kid, How can we forget that guy? And I think Patrovich. Uh, so Patrovich. I think oh, we still got right four, there. Card, four yeah. guys on the card. So, so pretty stacked. Um, that's going to be AC next week. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that... February 21st. Nope. We skipped somebody. How the hell could we ever Damien's do that? Damien's next weekend, February 15th. We skipped the whole week. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, February no. 15th, New what Mexico. Oh man, you're the right. machine. Marat, holy crap! You should have seen him last night. The guy was on fire. Yeah, I've never. I seen felt the guy. fury. Don't trust oh, me. Yeah. I, I no, was there. Definitely. I lived it. <laughs> I lived it. With one hand, I lived it. I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this <laughs> anymore. That dude's ready. He's ready to fight. <laughs> I'm super excited for that. Can't mm-hmm. wait to get out there for him and for him to put on a show. Um, next up for this weekend, we have UFC 247 headliner John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. Now let's take a look at the card. Um, one thing that I noticed is Andre Uall fighting Jonathan Martinez. Mm-hmm. Uall just seems to be fighting all the time now. It's like the Ben Wade, Donald Cerrone at this yeah, point. Every weekend. Yeah, so he's been there, been in the mix. Um, definitely has not wasted any time. Uh, who else we got on this? Oh, that Miles Johns guy. He was in Contender Series fighting Mario Batista at Ben Wade as well. Um, Journey Newson versus I- Domingo Pilate. He trains at 4-Ounce MMA down Actually, in Texas. No, I can't lie. I don't know those. These are all those pretty much guys. new guys besides okay. Andre Uwell at this point. He's not a veteran think, yet, but he's probably – I think this is his fourth fight on his contract. So he's pumping him out. Yeah. Um, none of these other fights – I'm not going to say they don't excite me because I feel like that's disrespect. But – they don't. They don't excite me. No. I mean, <laughs> as look, much. Derek Lewis, Alir Latifi. If that's a one round fight, that could be amazing. Oh, that's the main card. Yeah, those are fine. The next one on the, oh, the, the prelims, prelims. Ones are like, nah, okay, I, I'll you know well, watch it, drink a couple of beers. How many of those have Wikipedia pages? Ooh, oh, you yeah. put some salt on that well, wound right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not trying to attack it. Throwing anyway. shots. What I'm saying. <laughs> Doing the Mazi doll. What's that? I'm gonna kill you. It's tough. Do, do some. It's do tough some. to be excited do when uh, no one knows. Ah, look. Do some. Oh my god. <laughs> Hopefully they have good fights. Yeah. Oh, the main so, card. Yeah, the main card. Oh, card opener. We have Derek Lewis taking on Ilir Latifi, who's up back up at heavyweight. Yeah. In the UFC, he was always at uh, light heavyweight, though, right? I believe so. Yeah. Or In maybe. the beginning of his career, he started off as mm-hmm. uh, heavyweight. But I'm excited for him, man. Yeah, He's the guy who rides the horse. Yeah, yeah. The, He's uh, the most interesting man in the world. Yeah, man. Greek goddess. This guy, well, God, 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 whatever, <laughs> something like that. No, he's a, uh, he's, I don't know how, he's how tall is he? Five eight, five nine. Um, f- five, five ten. ten. Wow, and he's five ten. Fight heavyweight. All right, that's gonna be interesting. Record of fourteen seven plus two twenty, underdog. He's coming off two losses to Volkan Ozdemir and. 
Corey Anderson, mm-hmm. while the Black Beast is coming off of a split decision win over a Blagoy. Even off. Even off. Yeah. Ivan off, even off. Um, he's a minus 280 favorite with a record of 22 and 7. This should be a good fight. Yeah. Before that, he had back to back losses against Danny Cormier and Junior Dos Santos. So he's back in the win column. For him to get another win over a guy coming up trying to make his claim at the heavyweight division, letting the heavyweights know that he has arrived, this mm-hmm. is going to be a big, monumental fight for both these guys. Stylistically, um, we saw what DC did to Derek Lewis. Uh, Derek Lewis. Yeah. Latifi's a, uh, what, Greco? I think a Greco or freestyle. Uh, I thought it was Greco. Yeah, I mean. Greco wrestler, international. So I think he has the goods to, to really stifle the game. We see how he fights. He, yeah. If he doesn't land in one of those haymakers, he, he takes control, you down and yeah. he can control you the entire time. That being said, not many people can control Derek Lewis on the ground. 6'3". Six, 6'3", three. Six, three, and then he just has a weird way of getting up. Sometimes just... Like, you know, like, uh, people, like, you see, like, a lot of casual fans, like, they're yelling, ah, get up, just get up, stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Derek Lewis just does that, though. Sometimes yeah. he just stands up. I've <laughs> never seen anything like it. Like, DC's got great top control. Yes. And this dude just benched him off him, so, which could explain why. He's a why strong he, dude. Oh, 100%. 6'3", 79-inch reach, and uh, Latifi's 5'10", with the 73 and a half inch reach. That's My reach is 71. So that's saying something right yeah. there. But... I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting fight. I think stylistically, the favor should... I think this is a live dog for Latifi. I 100% agree with that. But um, Derek Lewis hits like a fucking Mack truck. Yeah, and he, he can connect. And you know, when he makes that face and he stares you oh, down. Yeah, that's <laughs> and he wobbles to the side and he's walking you down. And he's like, I'm about to hit you with one of these, that's a these problem. cannons. Oh, yeah. No, he's a problem. It's kind of scary. <laughs> I could see, yeah, I could see that going either way. I'd probably yeah. give it to Lewis. but um, And three rounds. Yeah. Next up, we got Mursad Bektik, who oh, is wow. a minus 145 favorite with the record of 13 and 2, um, bouncing, trying to bounce back from a ground and pound loss. Ooh, jab Ooh, to so ground and pound. Yeah, that, that was a weird one. Yeah. To Josh Emmett. Mm-hmm. Round number one. Taking on Dan Ige, who is a plus 115 underdog. Now, Ige is 5'7, 71 and a half inch, oh, 71 reach. And uh, Bektik is 5'8. With a 70 injury, so they're relatively even. Mm-hmm. Ige is on fire though of late. He's been getting some finishes in there. Yeah. He's been getting some decision wins in there. Four fight streak. That's pretty good. I mean, he did lose a decision to Julio Arce. Yeah, but, but Arce's tough, you know. Exactly. So he was on a contender series. He won, ran naked choke. The next one, Arce, he lost a decision in his UFC debut. Um, he beat Mike Santiago, ground and pound in round one, like 50 seconds, ran through him. Jordan Griffin decision. Um, he beat. Danny Henry, Rene Kachoke in round one, and then his last fight, Kevin Aguilar, unanimous decision. It just seems like the guys he's supposed to put away, he puts away. Yeah, yeah. And the guys that I think he's going to put away, like a Jordan Griffin or a Kevin Aguilar, he runs into the decision. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly how good he is, exactly. but he's definitely a crafty grappler mm-hmm. by trade with some solid striking as well. Um, Bektik, I don't know what he's really good at. I think he's more of an all-around just... yeah. Good fighter, he's like he's good striking. everywhere. Yeah, good, uh, good takedowns. I think. Uh, who do you what about move? that fight he had with um, Elkins. Darren Elkins? That's what I'm thinking. What of. the fuck was that? I mean, that's one of those fights where I, I mean, he was in control the entire time, dominating, yeah. and then Elkins just comes. I mean, that dude's gritty as the hell. Damage took the a da- lot of damage. Hundred percent to a give great that nickname. damage. <laughs> one of the worst tattoos I've ever seen, but yeah. still, like, gets it done. I mean, worse than Alan Belcher. Oh, you're right. That's a close one. That's, that's up there. <laughs> that's a pretty fucked up tattoo. No offense, guys. Um, Bektik, well, both these guys are both 28 years old. Bektik's mm-hmm. training out at TriStar Gym, so he's probably going to have a good, uh, good game plan. Good game plan. 62 in the UFC. Ige is 28, um, training out of uh, Extreme Couture right now. Oh, he's from Hol- uh, Honolulu, oh. Hawaii. I didn't know that. But he's on a four or five win streak. He's feeling good. Mm-hmm. He's a slight underdog. Um, I can see him potentially get an upset here. Yeah. It's which is not close. a minor upset. Mm-hmm. But you got like Bektik, he beat Ricardo Lama, split decision, Godado, um, Pepe, he beat him by body punch. Oh, round yeah. one. That was a good fight. No, that was a that was a good finish. You know, so he seems more battle tested mm-hmm. than Ige. Damn, so now I'm like contradicting my damn self. No, but it's tough. Like Ige's on he's kind of uh, right now, he's got that streak going on, so he's probably feeling good and obviously Bektik he just lost yeah. pretty decisively. So I'm sure like this kind of reminds me of Touchy Feely versus um, Sadiq Yusuf, mm, in, okay. the, in, in the ways that it's um, well, Sadiq, the like, veteran yeah. versus the new up and comer. I would still consider Dan Ige an up and comer. Yeah, and you know, I mean, look, four or five win streak. Bektik's still young. You know, he 
he right now he still <laughs> just hasn't shown he can beat like that upper echelon of guys. But I mean, Ricardo Lamas is that upper true. echelon. But even though he was on the downside yeah. of his career, because he did want to retire if he was going to lose that fight, mm-hmm. he said. He ended up winning. Um, stuck around for a couple more fights, and I think this was one of those fights that were, he stuck around for. Um, so it's hard. It's really hard to say, because you got to really just like see at which point in time did he beat these guys. Mm-hmm. Did he beat those guys when they were in their prime? No, that's or did important. he beat those guys when they were like, ah, I'm just kind of just trying to I'm collect here. the paycheck. Exactly. Maybe I'm just going to try and win and see what happens. Obviously, everyone wants to win, but of course. you're definitely more motivated when you first get to the UFC. Exactly. When you're hungry, to the, and, you know, going to for that end. belt. Exactly. exactly. It's different type of motivation mm-hmm. levels. Um, yeah, no, this could, this is a close fight. It could, really could go either way. I mean, I think it just who shows up on the night. Yeah. That's it. I fuck with both guys. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not picking. Yeah. I don't like to pick. It could go either way. <laughs> I'm Mr. Feeney on the fence. Um, we got Juan Adams, two, minus 230. Oh, favorite. Five and two record. Oh, wow. Taking on Justin Taffa, who is a plus 180 underdog with a record of 3-1. What is going on with these records these days? Is this on the main card? This is on the main card. Interesting. I'm not really getting it. I mean, I guess yeah. I get that they're heavyweights, but I mean, look, both guys have a couple. They, John both Jones, guys have less than. <laughs> look, I think this is just you know this is the new just UFC model, fights. man. We got the whatever's the main card or whatever the main event is. That's the that's the selling point. That's the selling point. It's starting to it's starting to feel like, and that's what boxing used no, is, yeah. is actually. Yeah, I, I think where and that's what I think UFC kind of avoided for so long. Yes, but. and now it's starting to feel like they just need a main headliner, and then it's just like whatever, whatever else, is, whatever else is around. Yeah. Um, yeah, Juan Adams, 5-2, and two, lost to Greg Hardy, Justin Taffa. I don't know who that is. Uh, what's the next fight? He did use to that guy, lose to that guy, Cuban guy. Is he Cuban? Um, De Castro, Jorgen De Castro. It that sounds Cuban. That guy is a good fighter. Oh, wow. He fought out in um, Australia. Yep, we saw him when he was when Al fought. Okay. We were out there for that one. Israel Adesanya versus um, Robert Whittaker. Okay. Tafa is 26 years old, Australian. With uh, He's 6 feet tall, 74-inch reach. Juan Adams is 6'5", with an 81-inch reach. Was that his last fight with Greg Hardy? Is that the one where he shot in and just... I kind of just hung out uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch this fight. I'm not watching this fight. Next one. He's a really nice dude, though, man. Um, no, no, he's he has very much seemed like weight. it. He yeah, but like weight. he's a big motherfucker, the oh, Kraken. Yeah. But like, is he like, is he cutting weight because he needs to cut weight? Like Brock Lesnar needed to cut weight to make two two sixty five. But like, I'm not gonna say he's jacked. Nah, like I mean, a Brock that's Lesnar. what I'm saying. Like, is this guy walking around like? Yeah, he's yeah. Still a pretty I think that's big different. Guy. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm leaning towards. Uh, I don't know who I'm leaning towards. I, I look, well, these guys have less than seven fights. Yeah. What the fuck is this? You know, no. it's like I don't know. Man, the UFC's not going to be happy with you after this episode. I'm trying to look at the track record. Well, Juan's finished everyone he has beaten. Yeah, everyone he's beaten, he's finished. Right, so who's he beaten? Um, Chris Rose, LFA. LFA, he beat Bryce Coe. He beat Dwight Gibson at LFA. Contender Series, he beat Sean Teed, finished him, who I believe was a Cage Fury champion. And he beat Chris De La Rocha, a UFC, um, round three. So... He's a finisher. <laughs> He's had one fight go to the decision. He lost to that wrestler, uh, Arjan Bueller. I thought he was a wrestler. I don't think, I don't think so. I'm going to say no. What, no what is me. he then? I, oh, my God. I thought he played football. Is that what it was? I think. I mean, you're 6'5". Big as fuck. I, thought <laughs> I hope he, he played was, football. I thought he was playing great. I thought he fought great. Oh, whatever. Look. He's got I, I stand by my opinion. I think the UFC should just cut everyone out of the top ten of the heavyweight division Oof. and make every fight one round, Oof. except the he- except the title fights. Make those three rounds. Boom, <laughs> done, solved. Problem solved, bro. This guy's got one of the best afros in the game, though. Right oh now. yeah, no. Look, it's if we're talking about really- hairstyle, I'll give it to him. No, he won that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm just gonna say Juan Adams is a minus two thirty favorite. And uh, Tafa is a plus 180 underdog. I will say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know much Use about that these information guys. as you will. As you will. I, I like they, they, they seem like nice people. They do seem like nice. I don't want, when I say that, I don't want to say it like these are bad guys or like I don't like yeah. I respect it. I mean, I respect any fighter that's willing to put, you know, put it out there. You know, that's not an easy thing to do. There's to a lot put of people. Put their balls or their tits on the line. Yeah, for real. Jesus. Um, but 
And a lot of people, they don't have that in them. You know, they talk about it for... We know people like that. Would you put your tits on the line? Um, I would... I'd rather not. Look, I'll go so out. So would you would put your balls on the line? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I wasn't sure which one you had. I hate you. <laughs> um, what's the next fight? <laughs> All right, here we go. Co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko, the reigning defending champion. She is Holy a minus shit. 1,400 Dude. fucking favorite. Jesus That's Christmas. 18-3 record. Taking on odd girl Caitlyn Chukagian, the blonde fighter. She is a plus 750 underdog wow. with a record That's of 13 and 2. Crazy odds. I would actually, you know, based on those odds, I would actually like put money down on yeah, Caitlyn. Yeah, why not? That's crazy. Why Minus not? 1400. I think this might be the first time I actually bet on a fight. Yeah, no, seriously. That's crazy. Now, Caitlyn trains with us, but she doesn't like fully train with no. us, so I don't feel bad betting yeah, yeah, I think on her. Fair. And uh, I would never bet on like one of you guys. Yeah, I, would never I do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I wouldn't, you know, I never obviously never bet against you. Of guys, course, but I'm never gonna bet on you guys. But I have enough inside information where I feel like I'm very confident mm-hmm. in the work she's put in. And I'm like, with these odds, how fucking yeah, why no, not? 100. percent And she works with our strength conditioning coach. Yeah. Shout out to Tony Ricci. And we've seen um, her work with Pumi. So yeah, I, we've yeah. seen some inside looks. I, I rolled with her. I mm-hmm. know she's tough she's on the tough. ground. Um, Valentina Shevchenko, she just seems more like a bull. <clears throat> They're both counter fighters. Mm-hmm. Now, here's my thing. They both fought Liz Carmouche, right? I believe so, yeah. So, Caitlyn lost a split. Okay. Um, but that, how long? And that was, was a that? close fight. Uh, that was in 2016. Okay. Now, Valentina's last fight was Carmouche, yeah. and that was a decision, but it was super... Nothing happened. Non-eventful. No. At all. I really can't remember any... I genuinely cannot remember any highlights from that fight. I think she dropped it once. It's possible. Maybe twice. Maybe twice. But even with that, it was like so lackluster in terms of activity. And they're both counterfighters. Mm. Same thing with Caitlyn. She's a counterfighter as well. And I I told her, I said, I could see you guys' fight going that direction, Mm -hmm. being very similar to um, Valentina's fight with Carmouche, being that you guys are both counterfighters. The difference is Caitlyn's... Footwork, I think it's pretty beast. Mm-hmm. She's long and rangy, and she knows how to use it. Yeah, I don't think she's going to stand there plotting, trying to trade with her. And I, I don't mean plotting in a, like in a bad way, but mm-hmm. like even like Jessica, I she likes to box. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. she leaves her chin up. Exactly, and she knows that. Mm-hmm. I've spoken to her about that, and. Um, She's asking me, like, like certain times she's hit pads or stuff. Like, does it look noticeable from the outside? Mm-hmm. You know, I get my positive critique, you yeah. know, so just to be honest about it. Of not course. like, oh, no, you look great. And I'm going to tell you the fucking truth. 100%. You know, I want you to get you better. You have to, exactly. Yeah. So that's a different style. Styles make fights. I truly do believe Caitlyn's got the goods for this one. No, I agree. And like I said, this you can't lose on this. This this is this is a ridiculous odds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plus 750? 750. Come on. That's crazy. And also, like, I mean, just listening to Caitlyn speak about because, again, we do have a little bit of more inside knowledge on this stuff. Um, just because, you know, Caitlin does train at uh, Longo Weidman, one commercial mm-hmm. avenue, Garden City. Um, Go check that out. But, I mean, just, I think she does have the right attitude just because um, a lot of people, you know, they speak about Valentina like she's like Mike Tyson, you know? Yeah. I mean, in, in reality, and again, I'm a, I'm a Valentina fan too. She does only of have course. that one finish um, as of late. She also, like, um, over Jessica I, who's not really the most... Um, uh, she's got two. Uh, Priscilla Cachuaya? Yeah. I'm not going to count that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I straight up, <laughs> Priscilla Cachoe has 0-4 in the UFC <laughs> with a USADA uh, violation, and before that, she was undefeated because she bought, she boxed up Brazilian street moms, all right? These are, <laughs> these are facts, people. She was brought in to lose to Valentina so she could have a fight at the belt. Um, I, I digress. I'm, okay, that was, uh, I, again, Priscilla might be the nicest person. Man, I'm such a dick. Uh, Priscilla might be the nicest person. <laughs> hey, these but are Snapple facts, These I are guess. facts, look. And so, really, Valentina has one, in my opinion, finish. one finish. Um, over. Hey, she went toe to toe with arguably the greatest of all time female fighter, arguably Just, uh, Amanda Nunes. Oh, I mean, oh, okay, that's true. See, like in stuff, in terms of that stuff, and she arguably won. I thought she won the second one. See, yes. in terms of that stuff, that's very like that's where I'm like, all right, now she, she's clearly shown some skill. Like that's really where. Um, and she can she handle should, power because mm-hmm. Amanda hits like a match. Of course. Um, but I mean, like, it's not like uh, uh, Amanda landed significantly on Valentina, from what I remember in that fight. But, but, but still, that's, that's my point. Still, she can handle a no. girl who has that, who possesses that type of power, who's going to come forward and mm-hmm. try to really separate you from your consciousness. That's definitely fair. Where like a lot of the other females is more like they're fighting, but their technique is not all mm-hmm. the way there with the punches. Like, I don't sit down on my punches because my style is to touch a move, and touch move, a move, yeah. touch you up, Max Holloway style. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have a girl like. 
Amanda who's looking to no, I'm gonna sit she down, bite down on my mouthpiece, and I'm looking to unload on your face. It's one of those swangs. Oh no, she swangs them things. Yeah, yeah. And I, but that is a good stylistic matchup for Valentina in the sense that she is, you know, soft very good striker. counter fighter. Yeah. She does that hopping thing. Yeah, no, she's very light on her feet. Inside kick, and yo, when she kicks, she doesn't even really like turn over. No, she just. Pop- Touch. This is a quick flick, mm-hmm. and then she's out of there. And you go, you start pushing forward. She waits for you to throw that left. Mm-hmm. Perfectly timed. Nice right check nice hook, hook that she likes to throw. And she's got very good grappling. I would say. I would say she's a might. Uh, she might even be a better grappler than she is a striker. If you see like when she actually body few, locks. Yeah, good takedowns, good body locks. I think she took Holly Holm down a few times when they fought. Like and she, she's a lot taller too. And yeah, Holly Holm's big. Um, so, and that's my concern. And Holly Holm does have good footwork. So now yeah, and very I know I said Caitlin has great footwork. Mm-hmm. I think the difference is the fakes and stuff where, you know, Holly's kind of just more here and then mm-hmm. she's like circling, 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 and she's mm-hmm. here, she's here, she's here with her hands like this. And ish, 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 ish. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very like, I don't want to say yeah, robotic. Yeah. I think that's I, the I, proper I term. The it's very robotic. It's, and I said the same thing about Jimmy Rivera. I said he's very well schooled mm-hmm. and disciplined. So if you throw something at him, he, he has, has standard responses. Like exactly, programmed. it's yeah. programmed to go yeah. super robotic. I'm like, yo, I can pick that apart because yeah. I know what he's gonna do. Exactly, it's a, it's know? almost like your best strength is almost your biggest flaw. Where exactly, like, yeah. Um, I again, I like Caitlyn Chances plus seven fifty. But it's not gonna be an easy fight by any means. Valentina, and she obviously. knows that. Yeah, and that's what I like about that. She again has the right attitude. Um, you know, she's seen Valentina's fights. She can. She's broken them down herself too. So. Look, I think this is a very yeah. good matchup. And it's not a lot of people lining up to fight Valentina. Yeah, and that no, says something. Deal. When you're when you're like, yeah, I want my shot, yeah. it's for a reason. Oh, you, know, you, got, it's, you got to know something or you got to feel something that you could possibly be doing there. Yeah. So, I mean, wish her the best of luck. You know, I, I, I think she's going to do a great job. Um, she but, got those tricky head kicks too, man. Yeah, no. She landed She landed that on, uh, I believe, Carmouche too. Like, same thing. Head yeah, yeah, kick, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like it dropped her. It might have, yeah. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. I saw the highlight. Mm-hmm. I was watching the countdown last night. And she clipped her, and the eyes rolled back. It yeah, looked like yeah, she yeah. went down, and the UFC cut it right there. So <laughs> I can't really remember. She dropped her all the mm-hmm. way, or she just stumbled. Oh, no, look. Caitlin's a solid fighter. Um, yeah, point fighters are the dangerous fighters because if you don't put them away or if you don't outpoint them, you're probably going to lose. You're probably going to lose, yeah. Because no. they are so good at point fights. It's like Wonderboy. Wonderboy could outpoint anybody. Mm-hmm. Darren Tilfai, he outpointed him. I would if you 100%. count those leg kicks, no, he, really, did, yeah. he outpointed the, the guy who likes to come in and try to knock you out. Mm-hmm. The one shot that Darren Till did land almost put Wonderboy out yeah. of there. But, again, if you try to point fight a point fighter mm-hmm. or try to – I don't mean, I'm not saying she's trying to try to point fight a point fighter, but Caitlyn's a, a solid point fighter. That yes. I think she's got the karate style background. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's going to be a very no, big difference. I think she get up on fight. the scorecards, definitely. You're right. Like, yeah, win some rounds and exactly. knowing, like, okay, I need to touch her up a couple of times to kind of make it look good. Exactly. And uh, make it dominate so I can steal some rounds and get Valentina to get a little bit desperate mm-hmm. that she has start, to press forward exactly. and make mistakes for her. And then make it easier for Caitlyn. Yeah. That's the thing, man. People who get on the bike like a Dominic Cruz. The one time Dominic Cruz got dominated is when he started to when become the yeah. chaser instead of letting people chase him. Absolutely. Against Cody Garbrandt. Mm-hmm. Cody Garbrandt fought a perfect fight. Counterfighter. Yeah. Um, our next one, this is the people's main event. Is it the people's main event? Well, it's just a, well, it's both. The GOAT, arguably the GOAT next to Demetrius Johnson, There's I would say. a couple people up there. With Khabib and those guys. There's a lot of people up there. GSP. Man, the list keeps going. Yeah, yeah. It just keeps growing. You All start right. naming people. I'll say uh, GOAT with an asterisk. Oh. Come on. That's fair. John Jones is my guy. He's always going to be my guy. That's fair. Um... He's a minus four fifty favorite. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Talking he's not mine. Oh, uh, with a record of twenty five and one, really twenty six and zero. Oh. He should be twenty six and zero, oh, not twenty five and one. We all know that yeah, Matt Hamill yeah. was bullshit. No. I gotta always make sure I, I put that disclaimer there. Okay. Taking on uh, so these are two technically two undefeated guys fighting. Dominic yeah. Reyes twelve and zero. Oh. He is a plus three twenty five underdog, mm-hmm. coming off of a huge win over, over our, boy. our boy Chris Weidman. <laughs> Um, a fight a lot of people thought he lost it against Vulcan, Ozdemir. Yeah. Um, Ovin St. Preux's decision where he dropped <clears throat> Ovin's at the very end of the round. Mm-hmm. John Jones also fought uh, St. Preux. Yeah. And it was a very, I don't want to say close fight, but it was competitive more than I thought it would yeah. have been. Where Reyes was a little competitive until the end where he put that exclamation point where he dropped him with that left cross. Mm, definitely. Yeah, he has a. Fin- I mean, I would usually could have finished that right there too. Yep. Like because the way Ovens fell it looked like the fight was over. If right the there, ref like, wow. jumped in, no one would have complained, in my opinion. Word. Except Ovens. Except Ovens. Yeah. Now, 
Reyes, 6'4", 77 inch reach. Yeah. John Jones is 6'4", as well. 84 and a half inch reach. Big discrepancy in the reach advantage Always. right there. Always. The yeah. longest reach in the game right now. John Jones, 32 years old. The, de- the, the Devastator, I'm about to call him the Dominator. The Devastator is 30 years old and Dominic Reyes. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is... It's interesting. I I always like to see an undefeated fighter go in just because they have a lot more confidence. And you can hear, listen. I mean, if you listen to Dominic Reyes, he is confident. Le- um, Leoto Machida versus Rashad Evans. Yeah. Two undefeated fighters fighting for the belt. That was the only time that's ever happened. That's true. I love and now it. we kind of have that again. Kind of, you're right. I mean, yeah. The only reason John Jones has that loss is for that attempted murder of Matt <laughs> Hamill. Like, that was... <laughs> I'm going to argue that's the only reason they made him lose that fight. Because, yeah, yeah that was too devastating. But, I mean, look, Dominic Reyes... I, Let's go skill set. Reyes wrestled in high school, which I okay. just found out he had more of an extensive wrestling career than I thought in high school. Yeah. Look, but again, it's high school. He talks about it. He is an athlete, like, and I think that is a factor. Um, but, but John Jones said, let's be real here, buddy. We're all athletes in the UFC. Look, that's, that's not true, though. I don't think that's completely true. I think a lot of guys more— I mean, you got um, Ben Rothwell. It, there's a lot of guys that are good. They're fighters, but they're not athletes. Like, GSP was a fighter-athlete— I, I'm not going to name any names that I believe people who are. But there are guys you can think of right now that are not <laughs> athletic that I love Derek Lewis. That dude's got the best Instagram in the game. If you're telling me that's an athlete versus DC, <laughs> an Olympic athlete. Yeah. And we like... There's levels. There are levels. And that's what I'm saying. Like, And Dominic Reyes, again, D1. Um, that's, that's significant. Like a D1 football player wrestled through high school, uh, wrestled and played football through high school. I'm not saying, look, that's going to be the difference in the fight, but I'm saying that is a factor that could be something that uh, we haven't really seen anyone else uh, bring in. Um, well, we haven't seen many other people bring in. Yeah. Um, and that could be a good thing and a bad thing, too, because I would say, like, one of the best athletes that John Jones probably fought was DC. And, you know, obviously it didn't work out for DC either, so maybe having someone that's going to push him to a more competitive uh, place might actually have John Jones fight a little, you know, fight a little better or maybe more... With a little more fire, because you know, recently, you know, you can argue that his most recent fights he hasn't uh, looked as dominant. Looked as dominant. But to be fair, that has happened to also GSP. That's that true. was a very that's a very GSP s thing where he was finishing everybody. After then, he got finished by Matt Sarah, and he avenged he avenged the loss, came back. Mm-hmm. He kind of had like a different approach to the, hit the fight game. Yeah, and that's you know, that like could very much be what John Jones is doing too. You know, just to avoid taking unnecessary damage. But and setting a, a record that of title defenses that might not ever be broken yeah, no. in our lifetime, possibly. How many? Well, I, I think he's at like fourteen or something right now. Yeah, he does have. Something, Came into the UFC six and zero. Something crazy like that. You're right. But you know what? One thing he does do very well. He takes care of his body, and you know what else takes care of your body? Hydro Canna. So. This is a short commercial break for our guys at Drink Hydro Canna. Make sure you check these guys out. This is a CBD-infused rehydration drink. Now, it has all the vitamins and essential minerals you need for proper rehydration. So if you have like a hangover or Mm -hmm. you're feeling sick or you're feeling your energy levels are dipping down the tank, drink yourself a shooter from Hydrocana because they will do the job. Go to drinkhydrocana.com. Use my discount code FUNKMASTER for 20% off. Tell them I sent you. Drink Hydrocana. That was good. I like that. These are my boys. Get that CBD. But to be fair, John Jones does take very good care of his body. I think yeah. he's him, uh, the Conor McGregor's are looking at uh, a LeBron James, seeing how yeah. well and how much money they've invested into um, just muscle recovery and yeah. maintaining your body. I That's think smart. Yeah, they're you realizing like you have to do that. So I think he's on the path of doing that the right way and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, just going skill set for skill set, man. John Jones is a phenomenal wrestler, national champ, Juco as a <clears throat> freshman. Um, Reyes, I don't think he competed as a wrestler in college, just Not in high school. Yeah. yeah. There are levels. People were comparing John Jones and DC's wrestling accolades. Um, I would argue that they're very close if they were to just straight up wrestle. I think it's closer than a lot of people are, are mistaken for because I understand DC's accolades, mm-hmm. but trust me, DC's older. John is younger. That's what I'm saying. Like, and John's IQ of wrestling is still. He could have, in my opinion, I've seen this myself of what he did to people. 
freak of nature what he was doing. No, he's a freak athlete. He's got those long arms. Of course. He tooled guys. And I was like, dude, I don't even know. We got, I know we got similar body types, but the stuff you're pulling off is just like next Super level human, shit yeah. to returning all Americans and making them just look like child's play. Yeah. And DC even admitted that too. He's like, yeah, look, if this guy was able to, you know, get, get his, his shit per- together, get and, his and shit, that's it. One. He could have probably could have been, you know, he probably could have been on the same path as DC. Yeah. In fact, like at least a one time national champion. Exactly. I, I'm if he wanted it has to. to be. I mean, if he, but that's, I mean, that seems to be the story of John Jones life though. No, just Phil Davis. Phil. Da- I've seen him wrestle him. Really? When Phil Davis was just starting, bro. Just starting. I'm telling you, M. Fuck impressive. Wow. All right. See, I mean, again. And this is the inside stuff. I'm like, you guys, don't don't put, don't throw dirt on his wrestling (laughs) accolades. He's fucking good. No, of course. And that, again, that's what DC was saying. If this guy had the person, if he could take care of all that personal shit, he probably could have gotten D1 and been dominant too. I mean, look. 100%. But, I mean, you got to, that's the thing with every John Jones fight. You got to think, all right. Is this dude doing the right things outside of camp? I think right now, you know, he is. So he turned over a new leaf. It seems. I think it he seems did. like it. Yeah. yeah. We would never know. You'll never know, really. Yeah. But um, I like to believe, and I think a focus, John Jones. And let's let's be honest here. The one close fight that he really, really had was who? Gustafson. And then he. Had a, what did he do to that man when he came back and fully focused? All right. There's an asterisk on that one too. They had to move venues. For that fight, I'm just gonna. Okay, that's that's, that's, I think fair. that's, that's fair. Um But based on what we've been told, again, yeah, the same thing. I've heard TJ Dillashaw was doing PEDs, of course, from years yeah, back. No, you hear his own team were like throwing exactly. him under the bus. Yeah. But I would never go out and start bashing another no, guy, 100%. making a living. Obviously, he's fucking cheating. 100. But um, where the smoke is fire. But I'm not gonna go out there and know, unless I unless know. Unless there's definitive proof. Exactly, and I'm not gonna be the guy who's like. Yo, I'm ratting everybody up. I'm like, yo, if you want to cheat, hopefully you get caught. Or if you're fighting me, I'm like, yo, fuck you, motherfucker. I'm calling you out on it. 100%. But if it's everybody else, you know, I'm not going to be like, hey, it's not my battle, so I'm not going to go out there and start like. And it's unfair to call someone out unless, like, there is definitive. Exactly. Like, that's that's the thing. So, Um, same, it could be a similar situation. Like, people might know, people might not know. It might not be true at all. I have no idea. Yeah, there is still, like, that's a problem. Like, it's innocent until proven guilty, you know. Yeah. He, he like there is no, we can't definitively show that John Jones was doing it unless he even admits it himself. Basically, like, yeah. I say that with TJ. TJ's like, oh, that was the only fight. Ah, bullshit. We're not, yeah, bullshit. Like, of course, I'm gonna call bullshit on that too. Like, there's no. Yeah. If you if you did it once, I'm gonna just assume you have decided to do. it. You're not gonna just decide one day. All right, yeah, now his ca- whole career exactly. trajectory changed after that fight with John oh, Dotson oh, off the yeah. Ultimate Fighter. You're 100 percent right. And his physique. Now, with John. I don't think his physique necessarily changed. There was like a little time in between, like when, when he bulked up. When OD. he bulked up, I was like, "All right, what are we doing gat here, guys?" I was yeah, like, yeah. Wait, "Hold up, what's going on right now?" All right, that was a little that was a little suspect. But aside from that, no, look, he does. He's a lean. He's a lean, athletic fucking monster. Like, what, yeah. you know, what are you gonna say? Like, and I'm not gonna say the steroids is the difference between him being that monster, or not. But regardless, if you did it, you're a cheater. But is is that gonna make a difference with the Dominic Reyes fight? <laughs> My, here's my thing with that. I always say a guy, and I've spoken about this before, a guy like that who parties and does stuff, mm-hmm. oh, maybe okay. he's got people that just gives him shit and he's just taking it. Well, that's it's very like, possible, too. Dude, we've seen that he sometimes he dabbles in the in the, in the, um, the white candy. The white can The nose so, clams. Yeah. So sometimes you, you don't know exactly you don't what, know what you're getting. Yeah, no, that's you true, too. Look, there's a lot of factors like that. Um, it's very unfortunate that ha- it's happened multiple times with John, so it really yeah, does so put like a bad light on him. It. Yeah, because um, I, I do think if he, if that wasn't an issue, he probably is like undisputed, you know, greatest of all greatest time. of all time. But that is always going to be an issue with him. But I mean, like this fight, Dominic. I do actually like this fight. I think it's a very interesting fight just to see how well Dominic Reyes came at, like comes in, what his plan is. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to want to keep it standing, but he said he's going to make sure he lets the ref know. Watch, hey, make sure he closed those fingers because I can't get in on him. I mean, here's what I'm saying. And if, John's like, you're focusing on the wrong thing, man. You're focusing on the wrong thing. I, look, I'd say... I understand both sides. I, I, I agree, exactly. I understand both sides. I think that is a smart thing for Dominic Reyes to even point out, though, just in the yes. fact that, like, now to, if it does happen, now it's like, come on, man. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. This, yeah. is, like, this is happening every time at this point. This is purposeful. Like, the way he does it is... You, like, 
Here's what I'm saying to avoid that. The how ref, do you, how do you, yeah, go ahead. The ref just takes a point immediately. You have to. You have to, especially if a guy's habitually do. This is a habitual eye poker. <laughs> all right, like <laughs> on the first eye poke, you're like, nope, and you should tell him in the back too. Look, man, look, we we hear some shit. <laughs> we know what you're about. If you poke this dude in the eye once, like it's that's a point. Yeah, and that changes the fight. That changes everything. Now, how is Reyes beating John? Um, is he knocking him out? I think that's his basic. That's his best shot. Yeah, he's not submitting him. He ain't a fucking jujitsu guy. Like if he hurts him and then if he hurts him, him, that's one thing. But yeah, I think it's all gonna have to be. I'm gonna say he's not submitting him. I'm gonna say probably not. I'm gonna say it all comes down. Vitor, Belford. Oh Jesus, TRT Vitor could not get it done. Grabbed his arm while he's dangling from his body. Luckily, he did not snap his forearm. It did break his arm, though. Like, his elbow, he um, hyperextended. Yeah, yeah, oh. And then he picked him up and then dropped him on his head and got his arm out of there. Complete wrong way of ever escaping arm bar. But he, he, Never do that, folks. Look, he got it done. Again, John Jones gets it done. But all right, look, Dominic Reyes is not juiced up Vitor. He's yeah. not going to swing for an arm bar off his back. And he's probably not throwing up arm bars. Yeah. yeah. Or anything of the sort. No. But almost, look, if, he can, keep it, if he can keep it standing, which I look. I think even if he can't keep he's it got a puncher's chance it's 205 got, I don't even want to say he's got a puncher's chance I think he does have it I don't he's got a puncher's chance one thing I, I haven't seen anybody attack the leg of John yes that's a big thing John that's attacks it. your legs first oh yeah we seen Tiago Santos throw that one kick and John slid Slim, yeah I was like oh yeah, like, shit so I guess we should be doing this more now like John's like me. We both got <clears throat> skinny ass fucking legs. I'm yeah. like, you start kicking my calves, that's a problem. <laughs> I can't have you doing that too early yeah. in the fight. And I'm sure John Jones does have answers to it too, but it depends. You know, again, Dominic Reyes might have a good game plan coming in. I don't want to say he's a puncher's chance just because I feel like it it sounds almost disrespectful to his chances where like like James Tony. He's got nothing but, to lose. Oh, that's true too. But he's expecting he's, he's expected expected to, to lose. lose. You're right. So in my case, it's like well, I got a puncher's chance. That's the way I look. I'm not saying, yeah. like, there's no way he can win unless he catches No, him. exactly. And, just, that's, and that's what I just want to avoid. But I, I definitely think... Um, imagine him dominating John. I cannot see that. I'm trying to even, like, how? Look, crazy things have happened. The sport is wild. But I don't see it happening. But no, I definitely see, like, Dom, I definitely see the possibility of Dominic Reyes hurting him on the feet. I think he's a little more calmer on the feet than John Jones is, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. It's like John just walks down. He's like this. Well, you do see how, like sometimes relax his reactions when people are throwing him. Sometimes it's that like it kind of, he kind of does like a look away, like close his eyes. I'm like, all right, that's kind of a for. A, well, that's also because you I know, mean we've also seen DC do that. That's true, it's, and, and that pop work forward and grab a leg and dump a guy on his head. Okay, that's true. Which too. is crazy that he gets away with that. At that it, does, level. it does work. That it the mummy guard. The mummy I told guard. you, man. That stuff. The that's awesome. Guys. But um, no, I, I hope it's just a good competitive today. fight. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just feel that there's a lot of tools that John has. He has a lot more variety of uh, strikes that he likes to use. Yeah, the oblique kicks, the side kicks, the kicks, um, front kicks. I seen him hitting the pads, and uh, a couple of those. If he even touches Dom a couple of times, I think Dom's gonna realize like. Shit, I got to make sure I'm really being careful and not walking mm-hmm. into one of those that could put me down. Yeah. Those front kicks really fuck you Definitely. up. Definitely, and that I mean, he's got that reach again. So like, you got you first, you got to get on the inside to do anything, and those yeah. kicks are gonna keep him um, thinking the whole time. I would say. Now here's my thing: <clears throat> why I lean towards John because Reyes hasn't necessarily showed me anything in one particular fight where I could be like, he's getting better every single time he steps in there, okay. or. Well, I could be like, when he's he's so good at this, this is going to be a problem. Besides the straight left. Okay. But he caught Ovens coming off the break of the cage. Yeah. He caught right Wyman off the, off the... Off like... Off um, of him sliding right, pretty much across yeah. the cage as well. And uh, he did a great job parrying Chris's right hand. And then, and then firing spider, back yeah. and stinging in with that left cross. So I would give him that. And he's definitely... John's also a lefty. He's, John yeah, could he arguably fight them both. They could be fighting southpaw, southpaw. Yeah. So... There's a lot of question marks going into this, but I do think John has a lot more tools. If Not he wants definitely. to put him down, Chris put him down relatively easy. If John puts him down, I'm going to say Wyman's jiu-jitsu is way better. But, mm. And I spoke to Chris about this, so I think it's okay that I say this. I, I just think he made one little mistake in yeah. getting his top pressure head over head that he can maintain the control. Mm. And uh, he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, I felt like I didn't do something right. And then when I showed him, it was kind of one of those things where he was like, yeah, I, I knew I that just might fucked have been up that, that one, one little position, difference, yeah. And that could have been the difference between him riding him out for the entire round mm-hmm. and possibly submitting him or 
you know, at least the fight going into the second round. Yeah. And John's a big 205er. If he does get it to the ground, you know, it is bad news for Dominic. working his jiu-jitsu a lot. Definitely. So. I mean, recently he hasn't shown his takedown game very well, um, John Jones. He's but been I think wanting this, to prove a point. Allegedly. 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 Be, these guys where they're supposed to be. He yeah. fought Tiago Santos completely standing. Yeah. Very, I don't think he even made an attempt for a takedown. Not that I remember. But I remember he did shoot on Anthony Smith, and he... Anthony Smith was making it difficult. Like, he was not going down. Like, so it, it's going to be a strange fight. He's a strange, uh, yeah. His style is like almost like let you punch yourself out and then try to come and back. Now, yeah. it, 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 it has worked, yeah, yeah, no. but it's, a, it's not a, a. It might not be the most technically proficient style. Yeah. yeah. But look, he's a tough guy. I, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what game plan John's going to go in with this fight. If I think if he decides, he said he's going to keep him. I think he said he's going to beat him standing. Then I do. I, then I do think uh, Reyes has a shot. Reyes has got a shot. So again, I just hope it's a good fight. I don't want to see. I don't want it to see uh, a duck. A duck. No. If it's a duck, I'm going to be pissed. I would be annoyed. But look, if um, if Dominic Reyes can get the upset, obviously that's freaking huge regardless yeah um, but if it's like one of those john jones five rounds like the last couple he's had where he's just kind of cruising and then it, it you know then i want to see him up at heavyweight i want to see him like really test himself yeah if he's gonna make it look so easy if to it's the point be like, like he's that, not even trying where he's then cruising like, then i'd be like all right we got to see him fight someone that's gonna really yeah. make me question like all right how's john gonna do this one i agree i agree all right i mean i think that's pretty much it man we're not gonna go too crazy um, with the length, I like the shorter podcast. Anyway, it's easier to listen to yeah. for you guys, and easier for me to edit. Ah, <laughs> a lot easier to edit. Yeah, I gotta get to work. <sighs> oh yeah, you got the. You gotta go open up the gym. I'm gonna go head to the gym after I get this up. Look at this. Um, we're out here grinding, man. Cause I'm out here grinding. Go work on my wrist control. Oh, one more thing. We didn't even talk about the nasty submission James did. We I completely forgot. Dislocated the entire the, guy's the arm. Yeah, the mirror. The mirror lock. Oh. Just another shout out to him. Again, man. yeah, that and was I've, vicious. And I've been in that submission with him. He's tired. And I was like, yo, bro, what are you doing to my arm? Push in, push in, push in, give up the position, give up the sweep. And hopefully he just takes something else yeah. instead of trying to rip my guy. So exactly. Oh my God. Um, but other yeah. than that, man, super pumped up yeah, yeah. for our team. Yeah, I thought it was um, a good morale boost for everyone. Exactly. Great way to start 2020. Yes, sir. Um, we got the one leg banded Donnell East um, in the PT room. Trying to get that little leg strong again. Take my strong leg. <laughs> um, he's he's working right now. Yeah. You can hear me. I can hear him giggling. Uh, hold, <laughs> hold Jim's out there. You have to put it in work. I love it. I love seeing that. We're grinding, man. We're grinding. There's something in the water over here. We're about to get back on top. Yes, sir. Um, again, if you guys like my shit, uh, subscribe to my shit. Um, or guess what? Spinning back for this motherfucker. Bitches. Drop a comment. If you, yeah, if you like my shit, subscribe to my shit. <laughs> take it easy hey um, we gotta do another technique breakdown if you guys Ooh. have a specific technique you wanna see let me know drop it in the comments I will be sure to address it and get something up this week um, also let me know your picks for the main event actually let's do the main card let me know yep. your picks in the comments below for the main event I keep saying the fucking main event for the main card drop your picks I'll drop my picks in the, the, the uh, description section or something like that perfect and uh, yeah, that's what I like to hear. So take it A's, O S, old school baby. Take it A's. <laughs>